my War Thunder content can be pretty negative at times, though I think a lot of people misinterpret my videos. As I tend to say, I make videos criticizing the game and offering solutions so that War Thunder can be improved. As a concept, it's great, and I do enjoy it sometimes, but to me and a lot of the player base, the overall perception is negative and a lot could be changed for the better. While we keep that dialogue open though, I think it'd be worthwhile to talk about the parts of War Thunder that are still fun to play. Areas that sort of let you de-stress. It all comes down to personal preference, so you might not enjoy the same stuff I do, but it's worth a shot anyway. Before I get into that though, I want to take a slight detour. Up until now, I've avoided doing sponsorship deals because, quite frankly, I think they're annoying and mess with the flow of the video, so I'll get right to the point. I've partnered with a company that makes pre-built gaming PCs, Apex Gaming. I worked with them to make a custom PC line, so if you're into pre-built PCs or are looking to upgrade, it might be worth checking out. You can get a discount by typing my username as a code. They're a great company, and they've been incredibly easy to work with. I'll have links in the description and comments. Now back to the video. When I want to have fun in War Thunder, my go-to strategy is to play anything besides a main battle tank or medium tank. When you play that type of vehicle, there's usually a lot of pressure on you to push up to the front and perform well. While you would think that mediums would by nature be able to fill a variety of roles, in War Thunder they usually have to be played in very specific ways. Instead, light tanks are usually what I end up going to, since they're incredibly flexible. If you want to get up close to the enemy, you can. If you want to sit on a flank and snipe, you can. If you want to stick behind cover and do recon for your team, you can do that too. Last but not least, you can help repair friendly tanks. If you treat your light tank as a supporting asset, I find that they're very relaxing to play. The same could be said for anti-aircraft vehicles. You might not get a lot of tank kills, but if your first spawn is a SPAA, your team is going to appreciate it a lot. Trust me, denying a KA-50, G-91, or F-4J kills is incredibly cathartic and you'll be improving the match for just about everyone. Radar SPA are the most fun and most useful, with the Stormer HVM being my personal favorite. Heavy tanks can also be great, as long as you play them correctly. Far too often I'll see people just assume they can roll at the enemy and win. That's not the case. Armor is always situational. I play heavies like I play light or medium tanks, meaning that I try to stay hidden, and only expose myself if I know the enemy can't pen me. The major exception, though, is that I use heavies for quick, abrupt bursts of action. If the target vehicle is taken off guard, they're more likely to panic and dump a shot into the thicker parts of your armor. This doesn't work for all heavy tanks, but as a general rule, I find it's pretty good. It's best to experiment until you find a playstyle that fits you, though. If you want some good heavies to play, I would recommend the T26E1 Super Pershing, any of the KV-1s, and the Tigers. It's usually said that if you want to have fun in War Thunder, you have to play low tier. I don't think that's necessarily true. Yes, older tanks generally give you more room to make mistakes. Armor is usually more relevant, tanks can absorb more shots, and there aren't a ton of incredibly fast vehicles. That being said, some low tier areas are pretty unbalanced, and can be frustrating to play. When I was getting my friends into War Thunder, they kept getting wiped by squads of veterans using Pumas. Instead of just saying play low tier, I'd say that 3.0 to 7.0 is a good area to stick to. That's where most trees have the largest amount of vehicles, and the matchups are balanced for the most part. 6.7 specifically is probably where you'll have the most fun. Pretty much everyone is a viable 6.7 lineup except for Britain and Sweden. America is the most enjoyable out of all of them, with an ample supply of vehicles that can fill a variety of roles very effectively. For them, my personal lineup goes T92, T26 E1, T25, and T114. I wouldn't recommend going higher than 7.0, since at 7.3, you start to see the various premium main battle tanks. When you're in a 1950s heavy tank, fighting a fast tank that has access to a stabilizer and APF SDS is not fun. On the RRB side of things, I haven't played it in a while, and I don't have the time to play through all the different BR levels, but if I had to guess, I'd say that things are probably still pretty enjoyable around 6.7. That's where you have most of the high performance super props and jets, which creates a fun gameplay dynamic. I think that wraps everything up. To a lot of veteran players, all this will likely be self-explanatory, but if you're a new player that's getting frustrated, I hope this helped. Like I said though, a lot of it comes down to personal preference. If what I suggested doesn't help, keep experimenting until you find an area that fits you. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.